Hello and welcome back to Painting with Timo. I'm Timo and this is the show where we create amazing watercolor paintings and improve your watercolor skills. In today's demonstration, we're going to paint atmospheric perspective. So, without further ado, let's get into it. First, I want to touch upon what atmospheric perspective is. Well, it is the fact that objects in a landscape in the distance have lower contrast between them and the background. Also, their internal contrast is lower. That means the tones within the object decrease with the distance. I will demonstrate this with my painting. If one compares the mountains in the foreground with those in the background, one can notice that the ones in the front appear darker than those in the back. If you don't see this, I've made a black and white picture of this. How about the internal contrast? Well, one has to compare the white caps in the front to the body of the mountain and do so in the back. Notice how the snow appears whiter in the front than in the back. Okay, enough talking, let's start painting. In order to get the snow caps in the distance to appear less white than those in the front, I will stain them with a light wash of purple. For that, I mix ultramarine, cobalt blue, alizarin crimson and cadmium red together. I make sure that the reds dominate the mixture and that my paint is very light and runny. Before laying in the wash, I wet the paper in order to get a soft edge. This will help with the transition of the sky later on. As I progress to the mountains in the front, I'll dilute the paint on my brush until there's none left for the mountains up front. Observe the horizon and see how much darker the purple appears there than in the front. Now let's move on to the sky wash. I'll use a big hacky brush for the blue of the sky. I'll mix some blue grey and cobalt blue with a touch of ultramarine. I'll keep this thick. Secondly, I'll already mix the color for the mountains that are towards the horizon. I mix a shade of warm purple and keep this runny. And lastly, I'll mix an orange for the color of the setting sun. This is done with new gamboge, cadmium yellow and some pearl orange. With bold strokes, I start the sky wash. As I progress downwards, I make sure to dilute the paint. As I near the orange part of the sky, the blue is now quite watery. It is at this point that I make the transition. With the orange paintbrush, I create a wet into wet soft edge. I also add a line or two into the blue part as the orange paint thickness is thicker than the blue part. This will create soft edges, but no water blooms. You can also alternate between the blue and the orange brush. Then comes the most important part of the sky wash. I take a clean brush and do a wet into wet lifting. I do it during the wash in order to secure soft edges and this will give the appearance of light. Notice how I lift more paint above the main white line. After the soft transition back into orange, I take my purple loaded brush and merge the sky wash with the background wash. This has also a soft transition. As I get to the distant mountains, I'll pick up some cobalt blue with my purple brush and keep the mountain peaks white with a hard edge. The following mountains are done in similar fashion. Step one, keep the edge hard at the peaks. Step two, wet the top part without touching the previous edge. Step three, 
with a diluted mixture of the purple background wash, continue downwards. Finally, step 4 is bring in the heavy dark purple mix. Now, it is important to start lightly with this dark purple at the back in order to increase the pigment to water ratio in the front. Notice how when I come closer to the viewer, the peaks appear whiter. The initial purple wash turned into a blue-purple and is finally totally blue. In the front the mixture is very thick and through that one you can achieve dry brush marks creating details in the foreground mountains. Further detail is achieved with my little spray bottle. It is important to spray the water just before the paint dries as to get in the optimal effect. Like this, one can make a large variety of watercolor effects like the filtered sunlight effect in my next level sunset tutorial. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Once the layers are completely dry, we are going to add some details. For this, I mix a thick raw umber and ultramarine mix and use a Chinese calligraphy brush. Having little paint on the brush and it being quite thick, this allows me to make wonderful dry brush marks. These emulate the rocks that are not covered with snow. I make sure to paint quite a few of them in the foreground before gradually decreasing the amount towards the back. Et voilà! Just like that the painting is done. I have achieved what I set out to do, namely atmospheric perspective. The mountains at the back have a low contrast in themselves and fade into the horizon. And the ones in the front are strong in contrast with white snow caps. I hope this tutorial has been useful to you. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe, share with your friends and hit the bell button in order to get upcoming tutorials. If you like this painting behind me, check out my last tutorial on painting power saws. If you got a burning question, leave it down in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, have a great time painting and I'll see you soon.